Hi Ryan, how are you? Hey Kia, how are you doing? Long time no speak. <laughs> I know, it's been too long. Yeah, so how have you been? What? Yeah, I've been okay. It's a strange world at the moment, so um, just getting through it really. This is an unprecedented situation, so I, I don't I don't think there's anything you can really call back to as experience with this sort of stuff. Um, I'm very amazed at how not just the organisation, but um, how the UK and the world has managed to keep going while we're all stuck in our homes, essentially. Yeah, and um, it's probably quite fitting for what we're about to talk about today, isn't it? With obviously it being LGBT History Month and their their slogan that they have, which is body, mind, and spirit. And uh, uh, I'm guessing that obviously that's that's been influenced by the current situation and people being in lockdown and and, and how that's sort of affecting the uh, the LGBT community. Yeah, I, I don't know if, I, I wonder if that is, they've chosen it for that specific reason, but um, uh, it's uh, it's definitely timely if, uh, if they haven't. Um, there's a, I think there's a, a general well-being trend across pretty much every uh, facet of, of life and support organisations or whatever it might be, so it seems like a fairly common thread at the moment, quite rightly. Um, how have you found lockdown in terms of, uh, in terms of anything specific with LGBT or, or not specific with LGBT? I mean, yeah, I mean, personally, um, to be, being a gay man in, in engineering, um, coming into lockdown hasn't hasn't been too much of an issue um, for myself. Um, you know, I mean, living in London, which is a very sort of multicultural, diverse city, and uh, Pell Fishman um, being obviously the same thing as, a, as an organisation, uh, but I can imagine that's potentially not the same for everybody. I mean, Pell, have you been working at Pell Fishman uh, all your life, or have you, uh, have you experienced anything? Well, not all my life. <laughs> <laughs> I joined Pell Fisherman in 2007 um, and uh, as a, within their business development team supporting on, on work winning as a, a straight out of university I'd done a, a biology degree at university I'd had some previous experience in a sales role because in my gap year I, I worked in a web design company which um, which included where I was a client manager essentially. Um, so I'd had some experience, but I'd gone into to, to university to do biology. Joined Pell Frischman after sort of being in education for such a long period of time, wanted to get out of uh, wanted to get out of education for a bit, but I'd fully intended to sort of go back and to university and, and go for a PhD actually in, in my sort of chosen bio, biology field. And uh, but I joined Pell, came to London, joined Pell Frischman and uh, never really looked back. Um, and so yeah, I've been there ever since. Um, within the, the, you know, the business development team and, and sometimes marketing and you know, various parts of management and stuff. Um, and it's been a really, uh, you know, fun and interesting organisation to, to work for. Um, I didn't come out, I didn't come out at Pell Frischman. Not like, hey everybody, I just want to, you know, like a, an all person email. Bomb out. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, which I, if you feel like you need to do that then fine, but um, it's, it's not my style. Um, but uh, I think it just sort of uh, integrated generally into into the conversation and I think that's, uh, I was having a conversation with this uh, with somebody the other day, not not someone from Pell Frischman, just, um, just a, a random person, and I mentioned that we were going to be having this discussion, and they said, um, "You know, why why are you having the discussion? It's 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 not is it is it why is it an issue? You know, it shouldn't be an issue anymore. I don't care." Was their their perspective? Um, so why are you making why are you making a big thing of it, sort of thing? And um, and in many ways, they're absolutely right. 
you know, the, the, it shouldn't be a big thing and we shouldn't really have to do uh, videos talking about it and, and all that sort of stuff. It should just be, you know, some people are gay, some people are straight, some people are trans, whatever. And just as, you know, we don't have to have a conversation about why some people have blonde hair and some people have, have brown hair. You know, it's, it's, uh, there's a, there's a, 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 when you talked about normality, I think what we mean is, is frequency. So there's a, obviously there's a higher frequency of, of straight people to gay people, fine. And there's a higher frequency probably of brown and black hair than there is to, say, red hair. Um, we don't have to have a conversation about red hair, particularly. Um, there may be people that do. Um, but, uh, you know, so wh why is it that we have to have the conversation in the first place? Um, and I think that it's, it touches upon that, the thing that you said. I, th I think it would be a really horrible place to work if everyone turned up and sat at their desk like a robot and, and you know, were, were unable to bring anything. Uh, so first of all, I think that wouldn't be fun. Secondly, that's just not reality. Everyone talks about their personal life to some degree. Some people may be a lot more open than others. Um, and there's just a natural politeness within, you know, between human beings, which is, oh, what did you get up to at the weekend? Uh, you know, and, and the, these questions just come out regardless. That puts the person who is perhaps not bringing all of themselves to the organisation in a position, the position to either lie just for the sake of, you know, pushing the conversation down the, down the road a little bit. Um, or telling the truth um, when they're ready. So it's it's a it's an enforced thing um, to some degree. And the sad truth is that in some organisations or for for some people, um, when they finally do, there is a a, a negative um, uh, response to that which puts them in a difficult position. Um, or, alternatively, there is a, a negative perception from the person who's having to make that decision um, of, the, of, what, of the potential for, for a negative response. So, you know, they may just simply feel that the, their wider team, because of you know, all the conversations that might occur, um, that they may be they're, they're going to get back, like, even if that doesn't necessarily happen. There's a there's a there's a fear, and, and it's perfectly reasonable, I think. To you don't know until you know. <laughs> so so, what's your experience? You're a you're an actual engineer. I'm not an engineer um, uh, by trade, but you you should introduce yourself in terms of <laughs> now we're however long into the into this discussion. And uh, but I thought interesting question would be what was it like at, at university going through engineering. Uh, considering engineering's quite a male-dominated uh, degree, where I think it's eighty twenty, something like that at the moment. Um, um, well, yeah, I mean, Pell Fisher was my third company, and I've been at Pell's for for four years now, six six years in the industry, and yeah, it's. I mean, if we just look around, you can you can see, can't you? It's very male. Um, male dominated and it was the same thing going through university going through a civil engineering degree um and but i to some extent i found that easier i think um i found it more of an impact the fact that we sort of freed of the shackles of being living at home and surrounded by you know close family members and friends that maybe you'd uh, so not not living a lie, but maybe not telling the complete truth <laughs> all the time about about who you are. Um, and when when you do leave that setting and you you are setting up on on your own, um, as I was in as a flat share, like like many were, um, you can sort of start start on a, a fresh piece of paper um, and sort of um, be who you want to be. To to sound cliche. Um, and being in a male sort of dominated uh, engineering course, I didn't find too much of an issue. But I don't know if that changes depending on, you know, whether you're, you know, gay, bisexual, lesbian, trans. I imagine it probably has a, a different effect on, 
on on each gender, um, especially if you're a woman um, in engineering, um, that in itself is probably uh, challenging. Um, but yeah, actually, when when you step into the workplace, I thought was was more difficult um, because you've got so many other factors uh, to take into account. You, I was uh, I was speaking to someone um, just before Christmas actually, uh, and had a similar conversation about being in the workplace and uh, you know being open about um, various aspects of your life, and that was more to do with religion. And but it sort of struck a similar chord uh, with myself in regards to sexuality. Uh, and a lot of people say, "Well, why does it matter?" As, as you as you mentioned previously, and as you said, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter. But there there is obviously all the social aspects that we, that we've touched on. You know, the conversations that you have, the fact that we're not robots, and if we were, you know, you, you're probably not working in the right place. You know, you, you want to be somewhere where you probably spend more time at home with your work colleagues than you do at home with your 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 partner. So. Um, so yeah, the, the, why does it matter? You know, some some people don't have the same positive, liberal, inclusive views as what we're trying to achieve in the world today and in society today. And you know, if the the person I was speaking to regarding religion was worried that you know if they if someone found out they were following a certain religion, would they be treated differently? You know, would they have to you know knowing that they have to take certain time off, or uh, would that affect their chances of promotion? Would that affect their chances of you know, being able to carry out certain duties that their role entails as an engineer, um, which is a shame, I guess, that some people still feel um, feel like that. But I think it's it, it's still the case, isn't it? In in many places, I'm again, I'm, I'm quite fortunate that um, that's not the case where 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 I work, where we work. Um, but um, has it been the case in in any of your uh, previous employers, keeping names, uh, I suppose, um, perhaps in the background. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, obviously now I'm in London as well, so I mean, uh, in previous employment, I haven't always been based here, so I think, you know, outside aspects have a, a big impact as well. I mean, you, you you build friendships as well with the people that you, you work with, don't you? Uh, and I know that in, in Pell Fishman in, in London, um, we... We do meet and you know not now <laughs> for that on record um but we, you do meet and socialize outside of work um it was less the case in uh, previous employment you know where the offices are sort of a bit more out in the sticks a bit more rural you, you go to work you, you know you you're there as an engineering in an engineering capacity you, you have your limited conversations with the people around you and then and then you go home so um you know it's it's much easier to put on uh, a front if you like in those situations when you know that your contact or your your interaction with someone is much more limited um, than it is now and I think maybe that's a reason it's I'm more open about it now because you kind of have to be um, uh, if you're not then you're going to be you know living a lie or, or trying to dance around the topic for you know for, forever for, for long periods of extended time and um, I know, for example, the I was I was doing a bit of research before before we had this discussion, and as part of the wider EDI um, action group that obviously we've got going going on at Pell Frischman now, um, and according to the Royal Academy of Engineers, you know, thirty five percent are less likely to be open about their sexuality. Um, that's specifically related to engineering as a whole, not not any one specific um, subcategory of that. But Is that in comparison with is that in comparison with other careers? So it's 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 harder to come out in engineering than it is in exactly I don't know, exactly than maybe healthcare. nursing or healthcare. Yeah, exactly. So, and maybe that comes back and stems back to the point: in fact, it is a male-dominated industry, and how much does that affect you know someone's ability to be more relaxed and open about their sexuality? I think the general answer to the question, though, that we perhaps both arriving at uh, to the to the people who say what why do a video why make an issue of it why is it an issue um, is that well it's not um, but some people think it is and um, and the 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 point to make about from our perspective or from the perspective of your your friend who was trying to decide whether to be 
uh, fully honest about their, their faith, is when you utter something like this, um, there is always a potential debt to pay and you've got to decide whether you can take that debt on um, and you've also got to try and work out how big that debt might be. So you look around you at the, at the, at the, the landscape within your organisation or your friendship group or whatever it is, your, your university, and you, you have to make that, that decision and you have to really constantly make that decision because you're entering into different groups all the time. Um, so th that's, that's why it, it, it matters. Um, the aim here is to reduce that burden of debt <laughs> that is potentially going to have to be, uh, be paid downstream by, by being honest. Um, and for Do you the... think there's a stereotypes associated with, you know, whether you identify as, you know, gay, lesbian, trans, and do you think those stereotypes sort of weigh heavy on, on people's shoulders and their decision to be open about who they are? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to speak for, for, I'll do my best to represent, uh, but an ally, but I, um, I don't want to speak for uh, put words in the mouths of, of uh, lesbian, bisexual and trans people but uh, yeah I think that's the kind of the whole point. Stereotypes are, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a panoply of stereotypes across across everything be they in, in rights movements or not or have a rights movement associated with them or not. Um, I don't personally, for me, I don't think the issue of stereotypes uh, even the negative ones are particularly because there are some sort of pseudo positive stereotypes with this stuff, you know, the the gay best friend in the Hollywood movie sort of thing. Um, but uh, the everyone's got one. <laughs> well, you know, there's a it's it's there is a negative from it. It's not to say that it's uh, that it's purely positive, but there's there's it's more positive than other sorts of stereotypes is what I'm trying to say. Um, but. You know, I don't personally don't think so. It doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't particularly impact me. I, I certainly think that it. I th certainly think there's. It's harder for. Uh, that there's a there's a, a bigger stereotype around trans people, bisexual and lesbian. Actually, I I, I think actually they probably have a bigger issue with a negative stereotype. Um, because it brings with it some of the baggage of, sort of societal. Assumption. Um, which I think is just less so with for, for gay men. I I think um, I don't know. The, trying to the problem with some of this is that it's uh, the, what, what's the point of doing the accountancy on on working out who's got it sort of worst off with certain things. Uh, it it's kind of feels a bit pointless. They all are deserving of, of of attention, is the is the point, and providing they all get the right attention, then uh, hopefully the 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 tide will rise. I think it's important as well, you know, it's that companies don't jump on the commercial and marketing bandwagon. I mean, there's you know the, around the world now, there's there's parades, you know, and uh, celebrations. Uh, certain times of the year to to celebrate you know diversity, and I think there's there is a danger you know that companies will change their logo and you know put on events and participate and provide floats for different parades and the the whole because it's a, a celebration you know but it's just we need to remember what that what that sort of parade and what those that change of that logo what that stands for. And, what what are they trying to achieve by by doing that? You know, we're not just out to you know, like you mentioned, get some kind of special recognition and sort of you know come celebrate with us, be one of us sort of thing. It's not that's that's not the point of them, is it? It's, hmm. it's there's there's a there's a deep history and recent history to the LGBT. Uh, we're talking you know in the last hundred years, not thousands of years, where lots of legislative changes have taken place and uh you know uprisings and i'm sure it goes back more than a thousand years but um, <laughs> but um but yeah and i think it's important that we 
we do recognise that there is deeper meaning behind all of these changes and discussions like we're having now. We're not a million miles off. I certainly think that Health Richmond's in a good place. Come across people through my limited career as a as an engineer where, you know, it's someone's not been so tolerant but you, you get by and hopefully there'll be a day when even that doesn't occur. Um, but the world's not perfect and life goes on. Yeah, the um what what from an external perspective what, what commercial organisations ought to do. Um you know, whether they do that through floats and logo changes and all this sort of thing, um, you know, it's up to them. Um, really, all they need to do externally is to is to make it, if, if this is true, to make it clear that there's an equal opportunity for you here, and that it's a it's a true equal opportunity. Uh, it's you know, there's there's not going to be a that that's an inclusive environment, and it's not going to necessarily lead to you. You might get a job there, but you'll never get promoted, or whatever it might be. Um, so you know that's that's the really the limit of the of the certainly the private sector organisation, I think, um, to make sure that they're making that clear, especially in sectors in which there is a um, an underrepresentation, and uh, regardless of what uh, what is underrepresented. Um, and then and then act in accordance with that with that external um, proposition. They need to act. They need to actually be an inclusive organisation. They can't just say externally they are and then secretly internally not be. Uh, well, they'll get found out quite quickly, I suspect. But um, yeah, as long as they as long as those two things are, are fine, I think that's 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 the essential part. Um, you know, for the very you know, the 16 year old deciding whether to do A levels for in maths and science um, so that they can maybe be an engineer and who might look at that and go, are the organisations that I might end up in going to be the sort of organisations which I can, that I want to end up in? Um, are they going to be okay? And providing that's uh, clear, um, then that they have a bright future providing they're good engineers or good, good you know, transport planners, whatever it might be, um, then the rest of it doesn't matter. Is there a good sort of uh, LGBT in construction group like there is, like there's, you know, women in science and engineering, um, uh, I know the Royal Academy, uh, the Royal Academy, the Royal, yeah, the Royal Academy of Engineers has, it, has a specific unit for, for women in engineering. Is there, is there something equivalent for for LGBT people? There is help out there. Um, I mean, I, I had a quick Google, um, nothing more than that. And, you know, you mentioned the Royal Academy of Engineers um, earlier. Um, we've obviously got an EDI action group now at Pell Fishman. Um, there's ICE are doing work into um, LGBT rights. Um, you know, there's, there's, you can, the, the list goes on. There's, there's plenty of support groups and, um, ways to, to get involved in engineering and combine that with uh, you know LGBT history, LGBT inclusivity. But I think I think most people eventually, you know, they, they, they come to terms and I think people need to be given time. I think that's really important. Everyone's got to be able to, you know, go through go through the process in their own time. Um, you've got to find the right company for you. You know, you've you've if you're in a company, if you're in a position that's um, where you're finding it difficult to be who you want to be, difficult to work, then, like you mentioned, you you you've got to try and find a route out of there. And there's there's plenty of organisations like ourselves that are very inclusive. There's plenty of help out there, and I just encourage people to to yeah go go find that help uh, if you need it, and um, yeah be be. Be who you want to be. <laughs> That's probably a good place to leave it. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Um, it's been nice to talk about something other than COVID uh, as well. <laughs> so, it has, hasn't it? <laughs> thanks for reaching out. It's been fun. No, good talking. All Speak right. Later. Speak to you later. Bye. Bye.